Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome back to Interstage Window, our show that we do on Saturdays at noon where it's a conversation, usually between me and uh, my lovely co-host. So say hi, Landon. Hi, Landon. Hey. Your favorite omniscient voice in the background. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Erica, for using your uh, your Prime for me. I did find out why that uh, that notification broke last time and I fixed it, so. <laughs> Uh, so it, it works now. Yay! Um, lurking for an hour playing Pathfinder. Oh, that sounds really fun. Um, that must be one of your D&D groups. Well, we definitely appreciate the, the lurk here. Um, so, yeah, I, I was really... Was... So... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sass! Sass, we just started the show. Perfect timing. Oh, my God, and a follow. I have. I didn't even. We didn't even do the intro yet. We didn't do anything no. yet. Oh my God! Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, welcome. You're about to watch a show about um, about role playing. So if you don't know what role playing is, then stick around. Maybe you'll uh, you'll learn a little bit. <laughs> we're, talking, we're talking about shipping, which means it's gonna get spicy because there's yeah. a lot of things with it. Oh my god, yeah, we're gonna get a little spicy today, so if you're sensitive, um, I'm sorry, not really, you're welcome to close the stream at any time, though I won't be offended. <laughs> oh my god, they've been waiting for us, that's amazing. <gasps> oh, oh my gosh, thank you so much, Sk Sass, you're amazing. Oh my gosh, I love your little raid emote with the little, the sign, the sign guy. Okay, oh my gosh. Oh. Oh, Miss Cupcake, thank you so much for the follow. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, while our raiders are getting settled in uh, Landon, why don't you tell everybody what we're going to be talking about today? We are going to be talking about shipping and learning how to make a ship and in a role play that lasts. Because mm -hmm. I think that's a big problem is that a lot of times they either fizz out or you don't have the skills on learning how to make it last for a long time and I mean, if you're if you're in for the long haul, as far as like a year or two arc, you want to figure out how best to work with a partner. Yes, exactly. So I think like I think we're going to talk about about that because I feel like shipping has the exact same pitfalls as kind of like um, dating when you're a teenager. Right. You don't really know what you're doing. A month seems like a very long you know, relationship. But in reality, it's not right. <laughs> So, so we're going to can happen in RP time in a month. Though. Well, that's true. That is very, very true. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get, and get the game going. Oh, and I wanted to say real quick, uh, I know that the announcements all said that Brie was going to be here today. Unfortunately, she had another engagement pop up at the last minute, so she's not going to be here. So I'm really sorry for you guys. Uh, Brie will definitely be coming to the party though. So stick around, uh, for the, yeah, for the two o'clock, she is going to come. She just, she just couldn't be here in time for interstage window today so so that's why uh so very sorry but uh but she's here in spirit she's here in spirit okay yeah you get me and i'm certainly enough for everybody <laughs> true okay but we love you landon we love you so much we i've been i've told you before like i don't know we wouldn't really we wouldn't really be able to do this show without you i don't think it would i know be, it would be they such all a come strange thing <laughs> <laughs> and my hot Who's here? Jane, we got raided. One of my friends from that Wolf Den server um, raided us. So we've got a bunch of a bunch of newbies here. Um, so thank you. Welcome, everybody. We're going to play View of Pinata and talk about shipping. Okay. All right. So with all that being said, we can get started for real this time. So um, so take it. So take it away, Landon. How do we want to get started today? Well, I think that we should talk about favorite things. Yes, favorite things. So what was your favorite thing this week? Um, well, I'm currently in the middle of my favorite thing, and I think that this has been a favorite thing before, but weekend getaways um, with the with the wonderful panoramic pandemic that's happening. Panoramic uh, pandemic. <laughs> 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 uh, I just uh, I just love that phrase. I just want to zero in on that phrase for a second. <laughs> I, I stole it from TikTok. Oh, um, beautiful. But yeah, with this wonderful pandemic happening, um, a lot of times you, you we haven't been able to like get away and get to like we've been living inside our houses. A lot of us have been working inside of our houses, mm -hmm. existing inside of our houses, not being able to gather with friends and family. So being able to get somewhere that might just even be a hotel room or a change of scenery with somebody you love or you know somebody's is always good. So I am away with my best friend Sam, and we're about like even like just two hours away from where we live but at least then it's like oh this is a log cabin so we're not used to this and it feels different and it will hopefully be relaxing for the rest mm -hmm. of the weekend 
Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that you guys were able to find a place that was like appropriate to go for the pandemic and stuff like that. Um, I know a lot yeah. of like B&Bs and places like that are getting booked up because people, of course, for obvious reasons, don't want to stay in a hotel with a gajillion other people, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, so, and yeah. Everyone has the, you know, the same idea as, as mine and that they all want to get away too. So yep. it yep. is nice. Shout for out sure. to Airbnb for making uh, affordable places to stay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not for anything else. They have some pretty shady practices. But for that one, one thing exactly and nothing else, yeah. right? <laughs> Access. Yes, 100%. What about you? What is your favorite thing? Okay, so my favorite thing is also kind of tangently related to pandemic stuff. Um, we have really uh, lately gotten into doing boxes so what i mean by that is like you can go on amazon and get these like kind of mystery boxes or there's like oh. monthly subscription boxes and we've been getting them for snacks okay so we've gotten a ton of them at this point <laughs> we've been doing it for about maybe like a month and a half it's really addicting <laughs> and um oh thank so you so much for the follow that... amber bear sorry go ahead no so this is a service that amazon provides Oh, no, you can get them on Amazon. Like, look up, like, oh, Japanese okay. snack box or German snack box or whatever, and you can find them. And then there is, of course, like, subscription ones that are that are not on Amazon, but you can get you can get one-offs on Amazon. So we started there, right? And that was very exciting. And um, and then, you know, that wasn't enough. So we, we then got uh, – we started getting the actual subscription boxes. And we got this one. We got this one called Exotic Nudes, spelled N-O-O-D-S. Uh, not okay. sponsored, but I wish. <laughs> and um, and it's noodles. It's basically ramen from all over East Asia, different types of ramen, fancy ramens. And oh my God, it's so good. It's That's so awesome. good. That sounds awesome. Thank Is you for the follow, the, tap water. I saw, the, I saw the TikTok for the spicy ramen. Is that what that was from? So that was actually one of the ones from Amazon that we just bought as like a, a ramen pack, but um, but it wasn't from Exotic Nudes. Exotic Nudes didn't. No, one of them was kind of spicy, but it wasn't like it wasn't like that. It's like just all different kinds. Thank you for the hydrate tap. So it was like we got we got like a garlic one. We got like a kimchi one. Um, we got like um, a sesame one. I'm trying to remember. Oh my gosh, thank you for the subscription tap. We are just popping off yeah. today. This you raid just made us pop off. Pull our streams, pull our streams more often. My oh goodness my, gracious. Oh my gosh, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> it just makes y'all go nuts. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, it's so good. Like if you're, and it's been like, we can't go out to restaurants, you know, obviously because of the yep. pandemic. It's just not, it's just not a thing. We have to get takeout and stuff. And some restaurants... Like we've all learned by now, they were great as a restaurant, but as takeout, they're freaking awful. So there's just a ton of places we have not gone in forever that we love. So this has kind of been a way for us to, I don't know, go out to eat without going out to eat. So it's been it's like ridiculously fun. And I highly recommend anybody that's kind of like looking for something like this. They feel like this is missing in their life to, uh, to try some of these boxes add some mystery and like give gifts to yourself that you don't know what they are exactly that's what it is they're gifts to ourselves so yeah that's Good. my favorite I love thing that. i thought mm -hmm. when you when you first started talking about it i thought it was have you heard about like the amazon giant boxes that you can like purchase this giant box and it will have a bunch of like returned to amazon merch or not merch but like Things. So people will order something and then if it gets returned, Amazon will throw it into these boxes and then you can just purchase these boxes. So you have oh. no idea what's in it. But no. it's literally unopened Amazon packages that so like you could get amazing stuff or you could get like just things like razors. Um <laughs> Oh my god. No, I have not heard of this. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for the gift subs tap. Um Lara and, and Shadow, guess what? You you have subscriptions now. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Um, no, it's not that, but that sounds stupidly fun too. So I'm not opposed. So I was like, oh my God, this is a new thing, but I like your subscription boxes too. They're, they're a little bit more niche and a little less chaos. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, so I can tell you guys since, um, since we've got like so many people subscribing and doing gift subs, I actually did finally 
uh, contract with an artist to make some emotes for us. So we'll have some custom emotes coming, but be, they were very cheap, so which means they're going to take a while. So give me a few weeks, but, um, but hopefully you guys will have those before your uh, subscription runs out. So we'll That's be getting those crazy. hopefully at some point soon. That's so exciting. Yeah, I'm really, really excited for it. It's going to be fun. Um, All right, shall we dive in? Yeah, let's actually get into the topic. Let's get into the topic. So before we do, though, I know this wasn't on the original agenda to discuss, but since we have so many people that don't even aren't really even text based role players, like most of the people coming to the show are, I think we should define like what is shipping in the context of role play. So can you give us oh. like a quick definition, Landon, of what role play shipping is? It is. Uh, characters that you and somebody else are writing together to typically play out a romance mm -hmm. a, or a romantic relationship. Yep. Yep. Which is where the term shipping comes from. Yep. So just like um, fandom shipping, which you're probably familiar with, like it's that, but like you're writing the characters with another person instead of just like passively enjoying it through art or fanfic or things like that. Or even like I think that it's also something important to talk about too is that it's like sometimes people will have inner ships with their own characters and that's not what we're referring to which we really want to focus on that there are two or more people involved within the dynamic mm -hmm. um, that you have to communicate with because if you're just writing with yourself which is fine some people do that with for especially for like npcs and side arcs and stuff like that that's great to add to a story but it's not um helpful as far as like you don't have to communicate with anybody you don't have to learn how to compromise or negotiate so yeah and that's what we're going to talk about today lots of compromise and negotiate stuff so yeah well that's the compromise i feel like is going to be one of the hot words of the day <laughs> <laughs> yes absolutely absolutely so i hope that gives you guys context for those of for those of you that are listening that are um that are new to the show, uh, please feel free to ask questions. If anything does not make sense, we'll be more than happy to answer those. Yes. Yes. We are here for that. Okay. So now well, that we've got it defined, I think we can like actually for real start. Yeah. So how do you know if a ship is right then? I think is that where we should start? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, I... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, and I think that one of the big questions that comes with answering that question is style of writing yes. specifically to plot or not to plot which yep. is a question we have asked many a times in this show um and it's if one person wants to plot but one person does not that might give you a hint <laughs> yep yep so different role players have different styles and we've say we say a lot that there's no one right way to do things however when it comes to shipping, you and your shipping partner at least have to agree on what the right way is. Um, because if you don't, guess what? None of this is going to happen. None of it's going to work. Yes. <laughs> yep. So we had a whole, and we had a whole episode on plotting. So if you guys, like, if you guys are, are you know, interested in that, um, learning how to plot, or you are plotters, we have a whole episode on that, which is on my YouTube channel. But I think the rundown very quickly that is that is important to touch here is that if you do not communicate a your style or your needs when it comes to real figuring out how to write this relationship, then you are going to struggle with like not getting what you need as a writer. So mm -hmm. so basically if you really need to plot and you're not willing to communicate that you need more plot then that's going to just mess with the dynamic. You can't, what is happening out of character is going to relate to what's happening in character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's important to remember. Yep. And I think the opposite's true too. Like if you're somebody that is more of like a pantser and you kind of just want to write and see where things take you and you don't want to do a lot of plotting, but the other person really does, then you're going to have a struggle because they're going to constantly be hitting you up for like what you want to do next, what you want to do next. And you're going to be like, I don't know, just what i just want to role play <laughs> yeah. and i think that like and again back to our plotting episode neither way is better than the other um some people really find like that that plotting fleshes out both the character but also fleshes out the relationship more than the writing actually fleshes out the relationship 
And some people don't need a full fleshed out relationship to enjoy the dynamics that are happening within the relation within the writing. No, they can just say like, I like a pairing that's like this or like that. And that's all the plotting that needs to happen for them, you know, yeah. and, and, and that's fine. Know, and some people need to know the big three astrological signs of each character to make sure <laughs> that they match up perfectly aligned. Um, I'm not shouting Naomi out or anything like that. Is that, is that every um, ship you and Naomi have made? Is that what we're saying? We're talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> She's the person who's into astrology more than I am. I don't even think she's here to listen to me call her out. So, but yes. Um, and th- and there's oh, no, she's here. Like she's the- listening. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, good. <laughs> um, it's just that different level of what you need in order to be invested in the relationship. And if you're going to spend time reading and writing and plotting out how this can work out best for both of you and your characters then you're going to need to like you're going to need what you need right mm-hmm. you're going to need to get what you need. so if that means figuring out what someone's moon sign is i guess i'll do that <laughs> for my partner <laughs> and i think i think like the plotting question um really is Im- is important in the same way that like the um the question of love languages is really important when you're when you're dating right so you know i love to bring it back to that so like if, if you're somebody that likes to give and get gifts versus somebody that wants like physical affection versus somebody that wants, um, you know, what, whatever the other love languages are, I can't remember at this point, but oh gosh, he's going to get the thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Professor Pester's here because I haven't bought the stupid sword yet for this garden. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, by the sword. By the sword. I will as soon as I have enough chocolate coins. Um, but if you're if you have a different love language and the person that you're that you're you know that you've decided to date and and you haven't like really figured out how to navigate that, then dating them is going to be a struggle. Duh. Right. And it's the same thing here. If you're more of a plotter and the person that you're shipping with is is more of a pantser or vice versa, then you guys are probably going to struggle, you know. Mm-hmm. So you have to not figure that out. Possible. No, it's not, not impossible. And then some, even then, some people enjoy the dynamic of being on the receiving end of someone else doing all of this plotting groundwork because they like it. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a, that's a dynamic that totally is doable, where it's like someone really likes to deep dive plot mm-hmm. and then present ideas to someone who likes to receive ideas. Yep. And that's fine, too. But you just have to make sure that you know what you're looking for and that you communicate what you're able to do with that person. Like, I think where a lot of ships fall apart in this stage is they'll they'll like put in their ad at their ad right like their rp ad that i love plotting and i i want to hear all of your ideas and da 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 and then you get into that first conversation with them and they offer nothing and it's like why did you put that in your ad then or like vice versa maybe it's on the other end like the person will put in their ad that they like plotting and all of these things but you don't like plotting so like then why did you reach out to them you know so exactly yeah, I feel like it's 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 both knowing what you want and communicating with the appropriate people what that is and having that reciprocated. Yes, and and that's what's going to a happy writer is going to make happy characters and happy yep. plots. Not necessarily happy in context, but as far as like successful ones. Yeah, that you'll be satisfied those, with. Yeah, and we've all I think experienced those like where you find an RP partner, you don't click out of character and so all of a sudden it takes weeks and weeks to reply mm-hmm. and you lose sight of the ship and there just isn't chemistry there mm-hmm. um part of part of the important aspect of all of this is figuring out if you have chemistry out of character so that you can write chemistry in character yep yep and it's not and it and then there's not just plotting styles right there's other things in to take into account like i know one that affects me a lot is length of posts if somebody wants to write three, four paragraphs every single post, it's not going to work out no matter how much I like their character or how much I like them. Because I'm just going to look at that and instantly be exhausted. So I have learned that I'm happy to do um, like friendship plots and sometimes even family plots um, and, and you know very dramatic or violent plots or things like that with people that have different writing styles. But... I can't do a romance with somebody that has like that type of long winded writing style. I just can't. I've tried. It doesn't work. <laughs> one of our, what's one of our subjects here is that it's like going into the chemistry idea, the, the chemistry of how to write 
of do you like long form do you like short form do you like chat based like mm-hmm. those are all important details are you more are you more about the lingering touching hands or mm-hmm. are you more about the fast dialogue yeah like those are two very different styles of writing within itself and so trying to figure out where to meet in the middle if you have to meet in the middle or if your uh-huh. characters like a lineup Yep, yep. Because it's not just about the characters' chemistry. I think that's the point of this section. It's not just about the characters' chemistry. It's about your chemistry with the other writer just as much. Yeah, and not saying it's not possible, but if you feel like you're attached to the idea that another person's investment in the ship is dictated by the amount of paragraphs they have in a post responding to you, and you only get a paragraph... That's disappointing. You're going to feel like that that person isn't invested, but that person might be more focused on the, like, we need to move the story along because this is supposed to be fast and hot and heavy and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's a, that's a chemistry problem. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think also it has to do with writing styles, not just length, but some people lean a lot more on introspection. Mm-hmm. And some people are lean, like put no introspection, right? So I think you have to kind of match up a little bit there too. If you're somebody that likes to write a lot of introspection and so then you want to see the other person writing like the pining thoughts that their character has about your character and they're they're somebody that wants to just write a lot of action um, and they never write that and it could make you feel like, oh, well, their character doesn't like mine that much, which might not be true. It might just be a style difference. Yeah, and I think that also, like, we put so much in our characters in that introspection that there might be, like, for some people, they might be, you know, dropping helpful hints mm-hmm. as far as how to fall, how, like, a hundred reasons, a hundred hints to fall in love with my character. <laughs> um, and, like, doing this thing and that thing and and all of these things to try to get your partner to get in to help your partner's character get interested in your character Mm -hmm. um and some people don't necessarily want that in the writing like some people are okay with having it on a more shallow level some people want it to feel like more of a deeper romance Mm -hmm. Um, again it's just it's just figuring out what is your writing style compared to your partner's writing style and trying to find something that fits both of yours and if you guys have different styles, it's going to be a thousand times harder. Not yep. impossible, but harder. <laughs> For sure. And I think that there's something to be said in this section as well about experience. Um, mm. It's because, you know, I, I love to compare role play to dating, right? So people will say things like, you got to kiss a lot of frogs. And it's not, and I, that analogy I don't think is really accurate. It's not that when you're learning how to date that you're kissing a lot of frogs. It's that you're learning what you want and what your deal breakers are, right? And I think that role play shipping is the same way. You don't know until you've tried something if it's a deal breaker for you or not. You don't, right? So I think that it's important to allow yourself that time to figure it out. Like if you, if you're like a younger role player or you're just starting out in role playing and you're like, I can't get any long-term ships. Gosh, this hobby sucks. I see all these other people being successful at it and having fun and I just can't do it. My stuff falls apart in a couple months, da, 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 da. Like that might just be because you're newer and you just need more practice. And it doesn't necessarily mean that giving up is the right answer. You might just need to be a little bit more introspective about what you've done so far and, and persevere and continue to try. I also think that that there's something important there to talk about more practice is that the longer you write with someone, the more understanding of their writing style you're going to have with Yes. So if your first ship doesn't go perfectly, it doesn't mean your second ship will go the same way. Mm -hmm. It might be that you discover their writing style, they're more comfortable with your writing style, what you need, everything like that. The next time you guys ship together or try to ship together, it might work out a hundred times better. Mm Mm-hmm. It might. Because you, you have that you have that understanding of that other person, right? Yep. It's that it's kind of like the longer you date somebody, the more comfortable you are with them. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and that absolutely happens in role play just like it does in dating. It's building re- it's building relationships. Like that's yep. just at the end of the day, it's it's that's what you're doing is you're building up a relationship and it's hard and it's awkward and it's online and then you're using other characters to build those relationships but it that's what we're doing here is that it's just trying to figure out how to compromise within a friendship or writing relationship Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I, I think what you said is so important when it comes to like 
uh, the long term ships that people have together. So I'll take like, you know, you and I as an example. Um, yeah. Even though we've shipped together like so many times, not every single ship has gone exactly the same. You know, it to it changes depending yeah. on exactly what the role play is, exactly what the dynamic is, what's going on in our personal lives. You know, um, so so I I agree that just because one ship doesn't go well, that doesn't necessarily mean you need to cut that person off as a shipping partner. It just means you need to examine it and say, you know, were there things that I valued in that ship? And are those things enough for me to try again with that person? Or did too many deal breakers happen to where I just need to to move on and it didn't work out and I don't think it's going to work out with this person? Yeah, I also think that's something else to talk about too is that um, in the positive way too is that even if your first relationship or ship with this, writing the ship with this person went really well, it doesn't mean that it'll go well again. That's true. That's true. <laughs> like you might have like lightning, thing. you might have lightning strike and then it never happens again. Yeah. And that's the other thing that, like, that you were talking about that it really, it depended on where we were mm -hmm. as far as like where our friendship was, depending on what was going on with our lives, depending on how often we could be there, where our priorities were when it came to RP, like all of that changes everything about how you write your characters mm -hmm. and i think that that has shown so much more in writing ships than it is any other time yep because especially if you go from like being like let's write this this couple and then in another rp let's write this the same couple it's like well your life could have been totally different and that means that you're not going to have that same amount of chemistry or that same amount of being on the same space mm -hmm. or who knows yeah sometimes the context just changes and things are different and I think what's important is that you have to allow it to change. Yeah. You have to. And that's the, like, and that'll, I mean, I know that this is advice for not necessarily starting out with shipping, but this is good advice too. If you're, if you've been shipping with someone for like four months and suddenly someone gets sick or, you know, or gets married or who knows your shipping partner, something in their life changes because life is rarely stagnant. You have to learn how to then reassess what's happening to reform your expectations yep absolutely 100 percent. hey jed welcome welcome you finally made it to a stream so happy to have you here um excited. absolutely absolutely i think that you have to you have to take expectations as, as like a new thing every single role play that you start every single ship that you start because sometimes that magic chemistry like it just was it just was a moment's thing and it doesn't come back in that same way and and that and that is totally valid and it happens and it doesn't mean that that you guys you know are bad shipping partners necessarily it just means that it was that one circumstance that made it work out and maybe you're not necessarily meant to be long-term shipping partners uh thank exactly. you so much as <laughs> or maybe this or maybe this plot or this group might not be the place for it. Yeah. Maybe, oh, that's happened to us right many now times. Might not be the place for it. Like that, how many times where it's like, okay, well, right now might not be the place for it because A, you don't have a character that it doesn't have a character that I want to write. Like just because you find someone that you ship really well with doesn't mean that you then have to ship with them forever. <laughs> True. I mean, we've had that happen, right? Where we're like, oh, we really want to do a, this, a ship right now, but we're not actually running a role play right now. We don't have time to do it. Yep. Let's join this other one. And we would join it and it was a hot mess and we just couldn't do it, yep. you know? <laughs> and it had nothing, or, or, and it, it was just circumstances. It was just circumstances. Yeah, or even in this one, like we both know that we're, we're winding, like currently we're winding back on how many characters we have, which means... We yeah, don't have a lot of characters that we can necessarily ship together. So you and I, even though we have had a ship pretty much for the last seven years, give or take, yep. at some point, um, right now don't have a ship together. That's perfectly okay. It doesn't mean we'll never ship together again. It just means that right now with what the situation is, that's our the dynamic has changed and that's okay. Yep. I think accepting that is part of accepting a long-term ship partner. 100%. Again, to bring it back to dating, if you do end up with, in a long-term relationship with somebody, right, it's not going to be that hot and heavy, you know, period, the whole relationship, you're going to have times where, you know, you you discover a hobby that the other person isn't that into. And so you don't spend as much time together, you're going to have times that you're just not as physically interested, you're going to have times where like, the other person's just going through a bad, a bad deal. And so the relationship's rough. 
And, and that's just normal, you know, in our circumstance, me and you circumstance at this point, it's like, I'm just, I just can't handle another character. I just don't have time. <laughs> yeah. I would love to do a ship with you, but right now my land and activity is inner stage window and that's just going to have to be how it is. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Um, and I'm in the same boat, but yeah. I think that that is, that is that. And I also want to touch on when we're talking about this, that, um, out of character life is not the only thing that can derail a ship mm -hmm. um and so like for me i have it in our notes as when you plot so hard and everything is der derailed <laughs> and where, like, this has happened where i if if thumper is listening she will they will know this well where we're like this is a really great idea we're in the plots we're thinking about it they make a character specifically for the ship Things are going to grow great, and you have that first uh, thread together, <laughs> and it turns out that your characters are terrible for each other. <laughs> um, the chemistry just isn't there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's sometimes you try something and it just doesn't work, right? Yep. Yep. And, and that's. It, and it's okay. nobody's fault. It's nobody's fault. Nobody did anything bad. It's just that's what happened. You tried and it didn't work. Exactly. Mm hmm. And that's part of that's part of tr figuring out to see if the ship is right or not. Is mm -hmm. Recognizing that even if you figure out chemistry, even if you figure out characters, even if you have plot and you figure out plotting styles, it still might not work out. Yep. And that's okay. Yep, exactly. Like it just it might be like some esoteric ethereal thing that is not like directly related to anything you two can change or do differently. It's just it just didn't work. <laughs> it's okay friendship yep. is fine thanks, yes Naomi. <laughs> <laughs> i think the i think the other thing in regards to this is that sometimes sometimes you have to learn to let go a little bit of your expectations so um i think this just recently happened to like you and naomi where you guys had plotted like six months worth of stuff but then certain other yeah. things happened in the role play and the writing just went a different way and it turns yeah. out that actually you're, you're not going to to do those plans and they don't make any sense anymore. And <laughs> it was sure fun thinking about them, but it's just not going to happen. Yeah. And I think that that's the other thing, too, is that, um, that we're going to talk a lot about being flexible, but that's a necessity within shipping mm -hmm. is that especially if you're in a group role play, um, things are not going to turn out the way that you want them to threads even if you have it plotted out, are not going to turn out the way that you wanted it to because this is an improvisational activity. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that's what we're doing. We're improv writing. Um, so you can plan out how you want a scene to go so much, but at the end of the day, some things might come across differently. Some things might be better. You might have a better idea. You never know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or just once you get to the, the point of writing that, you must you might just like write it out and you're like, this feels wrong and you just can't do it. And you have to put something else in there instead, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Because we're all doing the spur of the moment. You know, there's no editing. <laughs> there's no editing that happens in role play where you can go back and fix it later. I mean, you can retcon to some extent, but not, I mean, not really. Not in the way that you can in other forms of writing. No, and, and sometimes like you'll say something and it might trigger a character. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Like, for whatever reason, it might, it might, and I know that sounds so weird because characters can't be triggered because they don't actually have emotions, but the, if there is something that's tied into that past, then sitting there and being like, oh, this phrase came across as a different way to my character mm -hmm. than your character meant it. So you could sit there and be like, oh, I plan to say this, but it's the context and tone that really matters like it would in real life. Yep. Um, and if they read it completely different, that's something that you can't control until you're in scene. Yep. Yep. And I don't, um, and I don't think, and just to be clear, like this isn't, we're not saying this like in the meaning of, um, the character has any control. They're, they're a character, yeah. their words on a page, they don't have any control, right? Like at the end of the day, you can't blame the character for actions you took, you know? And if your shipping partner is upset that the scene went a different way, then you guys have to work through that. And they're right to be upset because the character's not real. It's not their fault. But we also want to recognize that sometimes this happens and it's legit and it's just kind of like, it's just kind of like how it goes. You know, when you get in the moment, yeah. you just end up feeling like the character would react differently. You just sit there, like, I mean, and we can use this example that Naomi and I are going through is that um, this character that she writes in past iterations of it, 
used to be very like more manipulative and closed off and cold and because he isn't in this verse we were going off the assumption of what he was last time and because he's a little different this time that means his reactions are different Mm -hmm. um he has he's more capable of empathy he's more capable of of wanting to protect someone because he's a better father all of these things Mm -hmm. so it like just makes it very much harder to then sit there and be like well he wouldn't do this yeah (laughs) (laughs) um and then that little choice even just saying one thing or making one little choice then can derail all of the plot and that is okay Mm -hmm. um if you are a plotter like us that is something that you just have to accept that happens Yep. Um, if you're not a plotter, but you have a general idea of the directionality that you're going to go, some of times it is sitting there and being like that direction no longer makes sense. Yeah. It's like, actually, if we go in that direction, then the story is not satisfying anymore. And I think that's exactly. ultimately what you should be looking for. You should always be then- looking for like, what is satisfying? Hey, rival, welcome to the stream. Um, because if, the- if you're not satisfied, then what's the point? Yeah. And that's the pinnacle of like, what we're trying to do here we're trying to write good stories and we're trying to write stories that make us feel satisfied Mm -hmm. like you just said if you're not satisfied what is the point Mm -hmm. um and if it doesn't feel like a good story why are you writing it yeah like if you feel like this is like this is okay people talk about like role plays upsetting them or role plays like squicking them out or triggering them or whatever 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 like and i really don't think that that is the biggest um hurdle to to jump over in role plays, the biggest hurdle is making the other person bored. Like, and that actually happens. That actually happens regularly. And it's something that I think we don't talk about enough. But yeah, if you're writing it and it turns out that what you had planned is freaking boring, then don't do it. Yeah. Well, and I think that's, um, I think there's also a good balance there too, because sometimes it's like, also, another thing that feels unsatisfying is not allowing certain things to settle. Yeah. That things like it, and this is something that happens in TV relationships more often too. We're like in a season, a thousand and one things will happen to a relationship. And then you sit there and go, why is this relationship still together? Ah, why are you calling out every single CW show right now, Landon? I am. And I'm calling out almost every single role player. We do that too. We do that too. I do I that. that. I think the balance is really trying to find somewhere in the middle of that, right? It's trying to find someone who can tell the story at the same pace that you want to go, that can sit there and be like, oh, I want to be able to write this but also i want to keep it interesting don't bore you but also don't overwhelm you yeah and it is a hard balance to strike for real it is especially because like writing doesn't happen in real time right um so the the world of writing goes both incredibly fast and incredibly slow yeah but it never matches (laughs) what it never matches it just goes way faster way slow yeah well, and it, and it both at the same time, because, right, it has to go way, slay, way slow because something that might take 30 minutes, a conversation that might take 30 minutes, might take three days to write out. Yep. Um, but then you can also time skip. So, like, suddenly you can be like, fast forward a week. Mm-hmm, <laughs> fast mm-hmm. forward three days. Um, and you, you haven't necessarily had on-screen development during that time. So things also feel super hyperspeed because you could be three threads later and, you know, someone could be... It could be like, oh, we're enemies, and then three threads later, we're lovers. And it'd be like, okay, but that happened in the span of a week, but also at the same time, it's taken a month to write out. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) So things can feel, like, very strange in, like, a time-dilated way, for sure. (laughs) (laughs) Or your smut last 84 years. That happened to us the other day, where we're like, this is just a circle. (laughs) Oh, my God. It's true. But we love it. We love Cassian. (laughs) But is no, that how like we're that, saying it? Is that how you say it, by the way, out loud? Yeah, that's how I say it. Okay. She has the she has the posh British accent, so it's not even posh her accent, but she has the British accent, so she has the superior way of saying it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> she says yes, too. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, rival. To answer your question earlier, um, I saw you, but we were in the middle of a of a thing. Uh, we're talking about role play shipping. If somebody could type out, um, explaining a little bit about role play to to some of our new people who were part of the raid and just now kind of tuning in, that would be. Awesome. I would love you guys for that. So yeah, I think I think finding that chemistry with the other person 
is is like kind of like step one, right? That's the most important thing, but it's not just it's not just finding that chemistry with them. It's also like maintaining that chemistry. So I really think like that's you you should always be checking in with the other person and making sure that you guys are still on that same page that like things haven't changed. Thank you for the hydrates, Kay. Because things can yeah. change. Things can change. Well and and then all of a sudden like you've you've grown in different directions and maybe you like used to be good partners but you're not anymore or vice versa you used, you tried it before and it didn't work but now maybe it works you know and i think that um that leads us into our next topic which is going to be the big c word mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. communicate right <laughs> that's what you're saying is check in with your partner see what's working see what's not working communication is the number one rule with this mm-hmm Mm -hmm. You should be in communication with your partner. Yep. Yep. It uh, is. You should it treat is. it the same way you treat a close friendship or yep. your lover or your spouse. You know, I hear, I hear this is like a very boomer thing, but I hear it sometimes like older men, especially, but this, everybody's guilty of this a little bit, you know, cause we all have anxieties and things. They'll say, I don't need to tell my wife. I loved her. I love her. I told her that the day that I married her. And if it ever changes, I'll let her know. And that's just Ugh. wrong. That's so wrong. Like, no, you need to be checking in all the time. All the time. Yeah. And, and here's the thing, like every relationship is going to have different levels of communication. Some people don't need checking in that often. I'm saying more than when on your wedding day, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody needs more than one check-in. Like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like you and I, when we ship together, it would, we would, we could, we check in every, every week, right? And yeah. if we had ideas, we'd send them back and forth. And that was just our style. Yep. It's very unusual if Naomi, Naomi and I don't go a day without DMing about Cassin. Yeah. Um, Cassian. So like, it's just that changes depending on the relationship there too. Yes. And yes. that's not bad, but there needs to at least be communication. Like you can't just assume that you are writing a ship that is a romantic ship. And then like every, they're on the same exact page as you. Yeah. Because you're different people <laughs> with different thoughts, right? Thank you guys for the followers on um, Buck and Soda. I really appreciate that. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, you can't you can't assume you're hands off, even if you're a more hands off, don't plot, see where it goes person. If there is a intended arc that you want to make, you need to make sure that at least you're headed in the same direction wise. Right. Right. You don't have to sit there and be like, these are the landmarks we need to find. You just need to make sure that you're both headed west. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. And I think I think that that's where a lot of people falter. Like if they if you if they get comfortable, right, and they start feeling like things are going good, I think there can be a tendency to stop checking in, and yeah. then things kind of just peter out from that point. And I know I'm definitely guilty of that because I'm def I'm somebody that like, I mean I'm pretty chill, you know. And and yeah. if you don't if you don't if you tell me if you don't tell me there's a problem, I assume there's no problem, you know. I assume you're gonna tell me, right? So I tend to forget, and sometimes will go way too long without checking in. You know, um, but I know that the times that I have done that, um, I have suffered for it, you know, and and all of a sudden I find out that the person's been slowly getting bored with me over the past, you know, month or two or whatever. And it's like, oh, shoot, I let that happen. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I think that like what what Naomi just said in the chat is that. I really resonate with. I need to feel like the other person is is as invested in this relationship, ship, friendship, uh, dynamic characters as I am. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the you, you need to meet me on the level of hey, at least I'm interested. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because no one wants to be bored, and no one wants to write with someone who is bored. Like, yes. Even if you are making the person making that person bored, you don't want that person to be bored. No one wants to be want someone to be like oh i'm not interested in writing with you <laughs> yeah like and nobody nobody wants that right just like nobody wants like someone to stay dating them if they're not just not that into them anymore i mean people might yeah. say they do like they might try to beg their partner back or whatever but they don't really want that they don't really want that they're just being short-sighted and scared of loss you know they really want just someone that's actually fully invested 
yeah, and like let's be honest, the people that are like, oh, come back, are not sitting there and being like, come back and be okay with me, come back and fall in love with me again. Yeah, like, that's that's the other thing too is that when people like say that they want that they're fine with their partner not giving a shit about them, it's like no, you you just hope that you will be enough for them to fall uh-huh. back in love with. Yeah, you hope someday. that someday they'll change. <laughs> that's what you're saying. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, and then, and yeah, and then, like, it's also a sucky feeling when you can feel someone lose interest in something. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. and I, I totally get that. So trying to be on the same page of that so that doesn't happen because what is going to make people lose interest in something 90% of the time is going to be that you're, you've bored them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other 10% might be that you cross the line or that they're just not interested in the way that, that it's going or whatever. But for the most part, it is going to be that you made that person bored. Yes, I think so. I don't think most of the time it's that you upset them. I think most of the time it's that you bored them. Yeah, I agree. Yep. So um, how to communicate DMs. Uh, I guess group chats work too. People work in the, who like do it. Like for us, we have like a general chat or whatever. I've seen people in our RPs communicate solely through general chat for a shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, we've seen that. how I work, but it's communication at least, so yep. I'll take it. <laughs> yep. We also have some um, really cute things um, going on, which I think are helpful. Um, we have a, a trend in our role play right now where people who are just reading other people's writing will add little emojis to it. Um, and I think that's oh a God. huge boost. And it really is inspired um, people to reach out to others because they see like, oh, this person is like emojiing a lot of the stuff that I'm writing. Maybe they would be interested in being involved in this plot, too. Or maybe I should start something similar with them because they're so they're so interested, you know. Um, so with stuff like like I, I think there's 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 big and there's small communication. And I think you have to employ a, a wide range and wide variety. I, yes, 100% agree. Yeah. Um, and, like, that's just, that's interest, right? That's showing, that's showing that your RP partner matters, that they're not just trying to fill this void for you. Mm-hmm. I think that that's the other thing, too, is that when we come to finding a partner to ship with, you don't want to just feel like a body. Yes. Um, and that, and that is going to come in later, especially when we talk about, like, emotionally investing and, and compromising. But that you if you see someone who is advertising for something the last thing you want to do is to then be told this is the pigeonhole in which i am looking for Mm -hmm. uh this is you must fill you must fit this peg yeah Um, (laughs) because they feel used yeah Yeah, they feel used they feel like oh you don't actually care about me I am a vehicle. I'm like an entertainment vending machine for you. Like nobody wants to be the other person's entertainment vending machine. That's awful. Exactly. Um, and and sometimes when it comes to shipping, that happens. Yep. People do that. People are are looking for something so specific that they want you to fit that exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're not willing to necessarily talk about it or work with you on it. I feel like a good example of where I have seen this is um, in, and I'm going to call our, our group out a little bit, uh, face yeah. claim role players. We are very much using face claims oh, and, yeah. and love using them, but face claim role players have a bad rap in a lot of ways for a reason. And it is because of this, because people will go what we what you would call like face claim hunting is they'll say like, I'm looking for a Chris Hemsworth FC. They don't care who's doing the writing, what the style's like. They don't care what the character's like. They just want to have their little fantasy where their self-insert or self-insert adjacent character gets it on with um, a Chris Hemsworth adjacent or Chris Hemsworth looking person. And they don't care about anything else. It's really really tough. And it's really tough to be on the opposite side of that. And it's tough being... I'm going to call myself out here. It's tough being in that position of trying to find this someone who's willing to do this exact plot. Yeah, it's, it is. <laughs> the reality is, is that it's just disappointing. Even though you are the person setting yourself up for disappointment, mm-hmm. it still sucks. It still sucks to sit there and be like, well, why am I not getting the ship? Yeah. Why am I not finding this specific joker? Yeah. Why am I not finding this specific trope? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it, because you're trying to pigeonhole some, into something and you're not willing to work with people. Mm-hmm. Um, the way you should start all relationships and all ships, I think, even in friendships or bromances is sitting there and, and start big and then chisel out the details to the small. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Don't just sit there and be like, you gotta sit here. <laughs> like, I think there's benefits to knowing what you want and asking for what you want, but I think you have to still leave room for the other person to put their stamp on it. Absolutely. Because if you're not, then you're, the other person risks feeling like that entertainment vending machine, and then they're bored, and then the role play dies. Yeah, and I mean, I've had an experience where it will be like, oh, here, this is what has been presented on a advertisement. And then I'll sit there and I'll like present my ideas and then little by little it'll be like, no, it actually has to be a male character. No, it actually has to be this power. No, it actually has to be this type of situation. No, it actually has to be. And it's like suddenly shot down, shot down, shot down. It's like, I don't want to ship with you now. <laughs> yeah. And then you wonder like, so why aren't you writing a solo story, my friend? <laughs> yeah. And I understand that like want to like write this with somebody else, but like, I'd love to write with this character please let me be <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes i think people get very wrapped up into a certain idea so i'll so i'll tell a little story about where i where i've seen this um and i've seen this a couple of times so it's not this is not a specific person this is just a general pattern that i've seen where somebody has this this role play and this role play partner and they love this role play it's amazing it's awesome it lasts for several months it's really really good and they're like yeah 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 it's awesome that other person shit happens things come up, they have to stop role playing for a little while. Um, they end up leaving, uh, they don't come back, you know, whatever. And then essentially the other person will then seek out a replacement for the person that they lost. And this has the same exact effect as face claim hunting where the other person just feels like an entertainment vending machine. And I think when people are doing like the, the pattern that you're talking about, where they shoot down all of your ideas, it's because they're looking for this one perfect yeah. thing that is like this imagined past role play that happened that they miss so much. Yeah, or even an idea, I think it could be a past role play that has happened or a past role play that didn't happen, that was ended shortly, mm -hmm. or an idea. Like, even just an idea that... Like they got obsessed with a certain idea. Right out, mm -hmm. But, you, like, there's a certain trope. We've all been there. There's oh, yeah. There's certain enemies to lovers, and you have this great idea of an arc. Trying to fit someone into your idea of an arc is going to be ten times harder than willing to work towards an arc together mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like Just let them do part. let them do some stuff that you're not 100 percent interested in and i know that sounds like yeah. that sounds like i'm telling people that they shouldn't look for what they want and that they should consent to things that they're not super into or da da da, da. and that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is that compromise is necessary and that means that you're not always going to be 110 percent into it but that doesn't mean there's no value in doing it well, and like, let's also talk about good writing. Sometimes the best stories come from the unexpected mm -hmm. twists, mm -hmm. come from the unexpected things. How many times that, like, uh, I can, like, how many times has something happened that it's like, holy shit, this fits perfectly, and we didn't plot this or plan this out. It's just fitting. Yeah. Like, that's part of the wonderful thing about writing roleplay. And frankly, that's part of writing in general. That's why solo writers go through so many drafts. Mm -hmm. Is because they come across these discoveries halfway through ideas that weren't completely fleshed out. Yep. So if you are not letting anyone leave or explore the road, you're not letting them discover anything beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that's... And, and, and I guess it's okay, like, that's fine if that's how you want to write it. But for me, as far as, like, wanting to make something that lasts, that's not just beginning to end that you feel incomplete about because it wasn't satisfying because you didn't tell the bigger story that was there, let people explore it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hot um, <laughs> <laughs> No, I think that's very, very true. Um and, and there's other conversations that need to be had as well. Like this isn't, the flexibility isn't really the only one. I think there no. are certain things that you should be flexible on, but there's also certain things that like you need to know, like you need to know for sure. And I think one of them is exclusivity. Um, some people view yep. their shipping partners uh, differently than others. And to, like, it's just role play, but also I think you need to know if the other person is going to be offended by you doing certain things or writing certain plots with other people. So I think well, that's one of those things you have to be super clear on when it comes to this communication. Yeah. I think it's part of that emotional investment mm -hmm. because it's like, 
it sucks to sit there and be like, oh, I thought we were writing something, a story arc, mm -hmm. and we had a meet cute, and we've gotten to this point, and now I've read a thread where your person is sleeping with another person. Yeah. Like, that would be very alarming in an actual relationship. So yeah, how so. <laughs> are you supposed to, like, handle that emotion in a character's relationship? Yep. And the reality is the character might not know or anything like that, but it is very alarming to then watch someone else ship with somebody when you thought your ship was going in a certain direction. Yep. Now, and it it's... doesn't mean that that's just because they're doing, like, a side ship. doesn't mean that your ship isn't going anywhere. Because mm -hmm. it's but not having... real, right? It's not real. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, no, but what I'm saying is, like, if you have this long-term, like... Like, we'll use my example. If Cass suddenly just slept with somebody and I hadn't checked with, you know, my shipping partner, that might alarm my shipping partner. Mm -hmm. As far as, like, trying to figure out the directionality of where we're going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not saying that suddenly, and that's the other thing, too, is I'm not saying that suddenly you are bound and exclusive to someone that you are shipping with. Absolutely not. There are a lot of people who live on the assumption, me included, that until we have that talk, my character can sleep with or ship with or do side ships with as many fucking characters as I want. <laughs> exactly. Like until you've made it clear out of character, then you can't really expect the other person to be beholden to you, right? So if that's important to you, if you're going to get upset if they start a ship with somebody else, then you need to go have that conversation with the person. Like if you're getting invested to that point, like you need to tell them. Right. Um, and Erica is mentioning mentioning character bleed. Yeah, like I definitely think character bleed comes into it here because sometimes people take it like too hard. <laughs> I don't know how to like exactly say it, but like sometimes people assume exclusivity where there absolutely yeah. is not any. And um, and the thing is, is that when you have that conversation, you have to be honest and tell the other person how you feel because if you are going to get like a little you know that little green jealousy monster if that character gets close to other characters then the person needs to know so that they can express their boundaries right because i mean i don't know i can only speak for myself but i don't have no tolerance for jealousy <laughs> i don't have yeah. any tolerance for jealousy if you come to me and you're like you know, telling me this, that, and the other, you don't want me to do this plot, that plot, whatever, whatever, like trying to control me or tell me like, if you do this, it's going to mess up our ship or da, 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 da. Like that is a real quick way to like, make me be like, Hmm, well, um, how can I get out of this ship now? Because like, that's a little bit too much for me. <laughs> so I think you got to yeah. be honest because you don't want to like trick someone into a situation that they don't want to be in. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, especially if yeah, I think it's I think it's hard to balance, and I understand why those conversations are hard, um, yeah. especially on like just the exclusivity like aspect of it, um, because people will automatically think that oh we're doing the story arc, so of course your character wouldn't sleep with another character. Yeah, of course you of course you wouldn't be interested in shipping this character with another character, because we are shipping already. Mm -hmm. In the, And I'm not talking about, like, multi-shipping where there's multiple universes or the Tumblr way of doing things. I'm talking, like, in a group RP dynamic. Yep. Um, where you're sitting there and being like, oh, of course we're shipping together, so why would you need to ship with anybody else? Yep, yep. But that is not the, like, that's not everyone's assumed way. Mm -hmm. um, and it also depends on the character, too. Sometimes they're, like, there's, like, we'll take Estelle. Estelle right now is so she's sleeping with anything that can walk <laughs> um, that's just the point that's point. just the point she's at in her life you yeah, know <laughs> where she is at um and that so like if i had a shipping partner that came along um and i do i have someone that i'm shipping with her uh sitting there and being like okay is it like i didn't even ask is it okay that she's sleeping with other people i just kind of was like she's gonna be sleeping with other playable characters <laughs> <laughs> and you're just gonna have to be okay with that because that's part of her arc right <laughs> you're just gonna have to be okay with that and in another situation where i have jim um which is another character that is that is you know not tied down in a relationship i did check in with that partner and sit there and go are you okay with that mm -hmm. um but just also know that not everyone will check in so you do need to have that conversation when it's not assumed you mm -hmm. need to you need, it's the that person is not having that conversation with you you should have that conversation with them so that you're not taken by surprise 
Yes. Because they're still allowed to do it. It's not actually, there's no actual cheating. This thing, everything is fictional and your jealousy is not necessarily valid. Yeah. Um, it, but that doesn't mean you don't still valid, feel it. As far as, like, <laughs> yeah, your feelings are valid. Mm -hmm. However, the, like, the actual, you don't own or possess this person of this character. Exactly. Um, so you need to make sure you're on the same page with that. Exactly. Exactly. And then, and then dependent on what comes of that relationship, if someone sits there and goes, oh, yeah, no, I'm not going to do any smut with playable characters. We'll just say they're all non-playable characters mm -hmm. that are that there's this character is sleeping with um, and then goes and and continues shipping with a playable character. That's at that point. Then you get to sit there and be like, OK, is that something I put up with or no? Yeah. Like, well, why'd you <laughs> why'd you tell me that? Why'd you set me up like that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. yep. um, Erica had a had a comment that I just want to call out here. Um, I've only had one romantic RP go very badly, and it was because the person took it in a different direction that ended up being extremely triggering. And um, and I think that 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 goes that goes to and I know you had to miss the beginning because you were playing your Pathfinder game, Erica. So I'm so sorry, but I definitely think like that goes to know not only knowing your boundaries but communicating them. And I think that the first time you discover a boundary is often by accident. Um, I know that's what's happened to me before. Like a lot of times I didn't know I had this boundary until I was like, no, it'll be fine. And then I tried it and then it totally wasn't fine. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's not, that's not like the other person's fault. It's just like, that's what happened. Um, and so, you know, I just wanted to say like, I'm so sorry that that happened to you, but I definitely commiserate because I have been in that exact same situation and it, it does suck when it happens. And I'm not, and I'm not trying to like, obviously I don't know the situation and what's happening there. So this is just more of a uh, outsider perspective, but it helps then at that point if you have the constant communication and constant and the continuous check ins mm -hmm. to sit there and say, This is not the path I thought we were going down. I'm confused why we're doing that. Yeah, and just see what they say uh, and see if you can negotiate it. And that's part of, I mean, and that's not even like uh, that happened recently in, in even in like in our current RP where it's like you just check in, you sit there and go, Hey, this thread is not going how we originally intended mm -hmm. x y and z how can we correct this yeah or what can we correct this is or this fixable <laughs> this? Mm -hmm. like it's part of that having the communication channels open which is why i am such an advocate of if you are doing especially a ship you should have communication open. yeah constant regular communication on some kind of like expected interval so that that stays open Yep. Yeah. Yep, for sure. Um, and I think and I think that those are and those kinds of things, those kinds of things are such vital conversations that that's why all that stuff that we said in kind of that first topic about communication is so important, because if you don't have that constant communication, then having those like necessary constant conversations about like exclusivity or something triggering you or something like that, like those can't happen because you've not established that trust to have those exactly. conversations. Yeah, and, and obviously, again, not talking about necessary Erica's uh, example particularly, but in general, that, yeah, how if you don't have those conversations about what is what is being triggering, how is your partner supposed to know that they're triggering you? Mm -hmm. um, or how, how yeah, just, it's, it's, communicate, that's basically it. Sorry, that was the, that was the <laughs> way I wanted to go. Communicate, talk yep. about it. Talk yep. about if you're talk about what the expectations and the needs are of other characters too mm -hmm. because i don't think like exclusivity is not just the only one too it's hell um okay he's like this is another example is murder a deal breaker for your character oh yeah if suddenly my character goes out and murders another character that interaction has an effect on our ship mm -hmm. which means you don't necessarily need to get consent from your partner because that's, I mean, it's all writing and everything like that, but it is good to check it and be like, hey, I'm thinking this thing. How would your character respond to that? Is no go on the murder or yes go on the murder? Yep, yep. Like, because those conversations that are also necessary that because you might not know the repercussions of that. Yep, yep, absolutely. Um, cause you, you, and I think when you're doing like major plots like that, like we talk about like a violent plot, right. But I think this applies to any major plot that has like fundamentally changing things for your character, you know, energy to it, then you do need to check into your, with your shipping partner and say, Hey, this is, I've been proposed this plot. I want to do it. This is what's going to happen. Da, 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 whatever, whatever. Um, and, and make sure that they're okay with it. Right. Cause it might really affect the ship. 
And if it's going to affect the ship, you need to, one, know that. And two, you guys need to be, you know, decide if that's cool with you or not. And if it's not, then you got to tell the other person, like, this plot's not going to happen, my friend. I'm so sorry. Yeah, and that's, like, that's drawing your boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. That's sitting there and, and going. And I know Erica's talking about her experience. and that Yeah, I want to mention that. that in a second. Um, that, that this is something that's not working for me, and so I need to then not. Yep. Like that's that's something that is realistic that you have to draw those boundaries and it comes with practice and it does not get easier over time. However, the people that you learn how to trust, that does get easier. But drawing your boundaries are so important because at the end of the day, no one else is going to necessarily follow your boundaries while writing online. You're going to get people who sit there and go, that's just how my character is. Yeah, you um, are. And that's... That point, mm -hmm. Go ahead. You got to listen, listen to what's more important to you and or not. Yeah, like believe people when they tell you who they are, you know, and if they basically tell yeah. you, sorry, Charlie, this is how it is. And if you don't, you don't like it, then it's, you know, it's not going to change, then okay, no worries. If it's not going to change, I will then exit myself from the situation. Um, and that's valid too, you know, and, and for big or small things, right? Like this could be all the way to like, oh, the way that you're doing this is really upsetting me all the way to like, well, this didn't work out the way that I wanted to. Do we want to even continue to try this? You know, maybe the answer is no. And that's fine too. But, and if you have those communication lines open, then you can have those conversations so much easier and they don't have to be a big deal, right? Cause I don't believe, I don't believe that conflict is necessarily a negative thing, um, but it can become a very negative, stressful thing if you don't have those communication lines open. Exactly. And if it's, it's again, just always just checking in, just recognizing that when you are doing something like a relationship and it is an important arc in your character, then you are no longer responsible for just your actions in your character. You're responsible for things that happen to another character. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And that's just part of it. Yep. It to totally is. <clears throat> um, and then um, I think, so we, should we segue the way that into the other C word? um the, compromise yeah <laughs> compromise yep so so we talked we just mentioned a little bit about how like certain things might be deal breakers and that's not necessarily a bad thing that's how it is but i think that for some role players um they're so they know so well what they don't want that they don't spend any time trying to compromise and make it work so let's take the same example where you know, your character has been proposed a plot where they're going to go murder someone and you want to do it. You go to your shipping partner and shipping partner is like, oh, my God, that's going to ruin our ship. Please don't do it. You know, you don't just have to say yes. You can still negotiate from that place and say, like, well, how exactly would that ruin our ship? Can you tell me some more details about how your character would feel? What if we did it this way? What if we did it that way? What if we added some coercion in there so that it really wasn't fully, you know, their fault and they weren't really wanting to do the murder? What if, da -da -da? you know, you can go down some different what ifs to try to figure out if there is a way to make you both happy. And I think that conversation is so important and sometimes I think when it comes to ships, especially we get very wrapped up in it. We get very wrapped up in that character bleed um, because when it's when it's a romance, it's much easier for that to happen, you know, and and we forget that we can actually push back a little. This is just fiction. No doesn't have to mean just straight up. No, we can negotiate and talk about it. Yeah, and I think that there's always a. um <sighs> It's where it gets tricky, right? It's where that bleed of how much control does your character actually have mm -hmm. and how much control do you have on your character mm -hmm. starts to really affect itself. Because sitting there and being like, well, my character wouldn't allow that at any aspect. Yeah. That's not necessarily true. And also your character isn't real. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, there's, valid, there's valid things and pillars that you're going to stay with, but there's a lot more flexibility that you have with controlling your character than if that character was a real living human being right like um, your character doesn't actually have opinions you know like yes they yeah. do and but but not really like you know if 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 it really is going to hurt the ship but your shipping partner like really really wants to do that murder plot then maybe you should actually adjust your character a little bit you know yeah. maybe i mean it depends um, right that's why you negotiate yeah, and if you really want to, if, if your partner really wants to explore something or do something, like, I, I think that there is a, almost a little bit of, some people can get into hostage holding. Sometimes. 
Yeah. Sometimes it's not always, and sometimes it's because it is. If you're if you're like sitting there and being like, no, this arc is your number one priority in a character's story. That this this romantic relationship is what is important in your character's arc, which is how a lot of people view ro- romantic relationships in RP. Mm-hmm. That shipping is the number one priority. Then sitting there and going, okay, if it's going to comp- completely derail it and ruin it, then maybe it's not worth it. But mm-hmm. I think that sometimes some people hold too much power to that and yeah. sit there and go, well, this will ruin it completely. And then there are some people whose whose opinion is that the romantic ra- relationship within the character arc is not the number one thing that it's other relationships too, or other experiences that are going to be important. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And that then you have to decide, okay, is it worth messing up this relationship or changing the plans or, or messing with it a little bit. So we're not going down the same plot that we originally thought that we're going off. We're all going off the path a little bit. Mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. we then talked about is not a bad, bad thing yeah and again it's like it just it just all depends right there is no one right answer for this you have to like you have to negotiate each situation mm-hmm. exactly um and and it's sometimes not even negotiation sometimes sometimes it is sitting there and going hey i'm going to do this thing my character is going to commit this murder how can we how can we do it to make it sure that it's not going to blow up this ship? Yeah, like let's Sometimes let's figure out. To, I mean, like, yeah, let's figure it out. Asking permission, it's going to be, hey, I'm communicating with you. I'm letting you know, but this is going to happen. So mm-hmm. how can we navigate this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, both, I think, are valid because both are about communicating, right? Yep. And and you don't necessarily have to have to be as beholden to another person as you have. Yeah. That yeah, because it's right. fiction. It's fiction at the end of the day. And, and I, you get to write the story you want to write. Yep. Yep, exactly. So I think I think a little... A, it, it just depends. You have to have the give and take, right? Like, you have to have the give and take. And yeah. all of and to have that give and take, you have to have self-awareness, which is the hard part. <laughs> right? No, I mean, and that, plays, and that in itself also plays into, fle- into um, chemistry, mm-hmm. right? Is that you find out pretty quickly... How, if your chemistry as a writer is going to work because you find out how much your partner is willing to give and take, mm-hmm. how much is your partner willing to sit there and work with you on the plots that you want that might not necessarily be the easiest for the romantic ship to be the priority. Yep. How exactly. much, how much is that going to work? How much is that give and take going to work as part of that chemistry read as well? Yep. So Naomi has a good comment. When you start losing other plots left and right because of your ship, there's an issue. Exactly. And um, and Freya is pretty new, so we haven't come across this recently. Um, but in past role plays, we absolutely have. We have watched people like start out with all these plots, and then slowly, as the months go on, they don't do anything else. And it's not because people don't want to role play with them. It's because they shoot down every single thing other people bring them. Um, because of their ship and that is not good because then you get wrapped up in that ship and then that's all you're doing and then heaven forbid well, and then, something happens with the other person they can't role play anymore well now you you you've lost everything and i th- think that there is an important step there that needs to be acknowledged then people do stop wanting to write with you yeah they stop if asking you down enough people and you turn down enough plots role plays are small communities which means that if you turn down enough plots people will know even if they haven't brought a plot to you People will know and they'll see that and they'll understand it. And it's not always the best, but it does happen that sits there and goes, okay, well then I know not to, to approach this person with a plot. Yeah. I don't, I'm not really interested in doing that. Yeah. They'd be like, I'm not even going to waste my time. (laughs) Yeah. Because then why are you in a group RP, right? If your point is that you really just want to ship and you just want to write this ship, you can do that one-on-one. You can. Now, there are there are people that want, like, the plot drops and the lore of a group RP, so I think that's valid, but you have to be happy with that, right? Like, you have to be happy with that, and you have to assume the risk of that, which is that if something happens with your shipping partner, then you have nothing else to do in the role play, right? So you have to understand, like, that's the risk that you're taking, and you have to be okay with that. Yeah. Which, uh, it's just part of that, it's just part of trying to figure all of that out. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. so compromise i mean in like in any relationship but compromise with your plots be willing to work with your partner know when to ask permission and know when to beg for forgiveness yep 
sometimes if you really want something, you can't approach it with, hey, is this going to work with our ship? It's going to be, hey, I really want to do this thing. How can we make it work? Yeah. But those are two very different statements that have two very different conversations. Because mm-hmm. the first one, the answer is no, can be no. And the second one is, oh, let's figure it out. <laughs> yep, exactly. Exactly. Sometimes you really want it and you have to, um, you have to advocate for what you're interested in. Yeah. All right. Shall we move to um, the the thing that we mentioned a little bit earlier, but about um, emotionally investing? In, yeah. It? Yeah. Let's deeper dive into into that. So for those for those of you guys that are coming in a little bit later to the stream, we mentioned a little bit earlier on about how n- matching emotional investment is important. So we want to take just a little bit of time to really like dive into that. So so Landon, like how does that work for you as far as matching emotional investment with your with your shipping partner? Uh, for me, it looks like coming up with as many ideas as my partner is. Mm. Um, I don't want to necessarily come up with any more ideas than my partner is, but I do want to match them on their level. Um, because I know that if I start coming up with more ideas or more conversations or I'm starting the communication first, um, I start feeling like I'm running it and it's not an equal, an equality thing. Mm. So you mean like plotting ideas, right? So like well, whenever. Yeah, it can be plotting ideas or it can be, it can be things like making a mood board, oh. like that, like things like that too. That's, it's a very popular in our RP, not necessarily popper, popular in a lot of RPs, but um, for, you know, or sending songs or making a playlist or being like, Hey, this reminded me of this ship. Mm-hmm. This reminded me of that. Um, I'm not necessarily like talented in the mood board aesthetic as many of our, our fair, our fair, ugh, as many as our other, our peers are in our group. But I do really enjoy sometimes sitting there and being like, I was listening to the song and it reminded me of this ship. Mm. Oh, um, I love that. that. It can yeah. be things like plots or sitting there and being like, listen, what if this thing happened or head cannons or things like that? Like I love to, I love to come up with that kind of stuff as much as I love to receive it. Yeah. And if I am giving more than my partner is, and it doesn't have to be like plot for plot or mood board for this, like, but if I just feel like I am giving more and care about this relationship or, or ship or whatever more than my partner does it's a lot harder mm-hmm. to get emotionally invested and in, and continue to be at that level because my partner isn't paying it back to me yeah for sure for sure that makes a lot of sense um i would say for me it's about being able to answer when i need to know something so i'll give an example like um we had a, a recent thing with our with the ship that i'm doing with shadow with uh with sam and dean where i was like okay well sam wants to do something to to cheer him up um you know what would be a thing right and she was able to instantly be like oh he could do this 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 and so like yeah. that's what i need like if you're if you're if you don't know enough about how you want the ship to go and how you want the characters to be to be able to answer my questions then I'm going to think like, you don't care. You don't ever think about our ship. You don't ever put any energy into it. Like, like that's what I'm going to think, you know, and it doesn't, I know that's not necessarily fair or true, but that's what I'm going to think, you know? (laughs) Yeah. And I, and I, I think that there is some forgiveness to when you know the person to sit there and be like, Oh, so-and-so is going through a really hard time right now. Mm. Um, Like hell, we can take this out of RP and go, I used to have I used to have our enter stage windows outlines done by Wednesday, right? Yeah, that's uh, not realistic now, right now. <laughs> and now if they get done by Friday, it's a good thing. <laughs> but you know that I don't not care about this show based on when I'm getting my outline done. Like I, I you are flexible with understanding what's happening with my life. Yeah. That same thing can be taken into the RP context of, oh, things are happening a lot right now, which means I understand that you might not be as invested. Yeah. Or you might not know the answer right away or anything like that. But at least show, like, if you can tell when someone's interested. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, you, even even communicating online, you can tell when someone is interested in something and passionate about something versus when someone is just doing it to just do it. You can so tell. You can so tell. You Humans are very empathetic. Tell. We know. Like, people and know. At, yeah. And if at any point you think that they're not interested... 
okay first of all unless you have anxiety um <laughs> yeah sometimes it's the anxiety talking and they are interested in your being you're being like you know anxious and silly right but <laughs> i mean follow that gut instinct though like there's a difference between you can kind of sometimes feel a difference between anxiety and gut when you give enough time to think about mm-hmm. it um that you can sit there and be like oh it, this person isn't into it they're answering with one word responses Mm -hmm. they're not talking to me first they're not asking me when our next threat is going to be Mm -hmm. they're not asking what our next plot is that they're they're responding with cool with no explanation points like these things are all signs and if you put it all together you can kind of get on that yes (laughs) being like not into it yes uh hey summer welcome Hey, Summer. No, Naomi makes a point, a great point, too. Their behavior has suddenly changed. Yep. Something happened in a thread and their behavior suddenly changed. That's a sign. Yep. Like they were, they were this responsive before and now they're like this responsive, right? And, and I know that nothing has happened in their life. Yeah. As far as I know, nothing has happened. Yeah. And now maybe you find out something happened and, oh, well, that explains it, you know, but Absolutely. like, I mean, those are huge indicators. You know, like, okay, so I'll say, for example, I stream on Thursday nights, right? So I hope nobody's messaging me on Thursday or or, and thinking, like, why isn't she replying? Like, it should be obvious. You know what I mean? Right? Like, obviously, I'm streaming. So that's why I'm not replying. I actually expect you to be at my back at all times, even more on stream. Um, Oh, my gosh. And it's so rude sometimes when I message you at midnight and then you don't have the goal i'm not up to midnight anyway so <laughs> yeah i was like when is i was like when are, when are you messaging me at midnight land and you're sleeping <laughs> <laughs> you're in bed by then bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah and i think and i think that uh that it's it's not necessarily about you know responding well and responding frequently it's about responding consistently you yeah. know if you can expect a reply from somebody every day and that's their norm then that's their norm if you can expect to reply from somebody every week and that's their norm then that's their norm and when you see that change is when something is off right yep that's so it's, when that's when you see that change and it's not like a blip change it's not just like oh someone got the stomach flu and they're not responding it's a consistent change yep over the course of days and they haven't and like that's the other part of communication is then communicating is something is happening in your real life because you don't want to give your partner the uh, the idea that you are upset or bored or not invested anymore. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to give them details, but like even just a message of a lot's going on in real life right now. Yeah. That helps me understand that a lot is going on in real life right now, which means that I am not bothering you by texting you ideas, but that I don't expect you to then reciprocate those ideas. Exactly. Exactly. And I think like, and I think it really is what Naomi said. It's about that change, you know, because I have different expectations for different people based on whatever their norm is. And I think that's perfectly normal. Like you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have expectations of somebody and have the exact same expectations of everybody because you're just going to be disappointed. Like that's just not going to happen. You know, (laughs) uh, shadow's talking about her kittens. Yeah. Shadow just recently got two kittens. So of course she's been busy and not been as responsive as she normally is. But, um, but I know what getting a new kitten is like because my roommate got a new kitten when we got Ash, um, he got her as a kitten. And so, you know, uh, I know what that's like, and it will take up a ridiculously stupid amount of your time to <laughs> when you have new kittens in the house. Yep. It's, it's just, it's, it's nice to want something to be reciprocated. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, that's nice. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. Uh, um, and I, I kind of said on here is um, partnership. You are entering a partnership when you are doing an RP. Mm-hmm. Like, it can be as casual and as deep as you want it to be. It can be friendship or it can be acquaintance level. But it is a partnership. You're working towards together towards a common goal, hypothetically. Yeah. Which means doing half the work. Now, there might be work that you are better at than your partner is. So, like, things like plotting. One partner might be really, really good at coming up with ideas. And one partner might be really, really good at writing in-depth Uh, posts that take time and obviously to create and that like it's again that love language sort of thing where it's like oh that matches up because you both are taking the time or the energy to invest in it Mm -hmm. you both are meeting halfway you're doing half the work 
Um, it gets exhausting when you are doing more than half the work. <laughs> yep. And I think people can sense when they're doing more than half, right? And you're right, like half doesn't have to be like equal, but it has to yeah. be, um, it has to be like comparable, you know? Um, you, you have to have, you have to feel like the other person is putting in their 100% when you're also putting in your 100%, whatever that is, because different people's 100% are different, but you both have to be putting in that 100% or it's not going to work out. Exactly. And, um, a part of that too is, is understanding that like when someone says that they only have a specific amount of emotional energy to commit it's not expecting more than that. Yeah. I think that that's also something that happens is that we get wrapped up in like what we expect and what we need that we don't communicate or that we don't listen to when people communicate what they can. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's part of it is like accepting and understanding that somebody like <laughs> you work a full-time job. So expecting you to be as available as I want you to be, um, doesn't necessarily it's not realistic right yeah You're, you can't respond in 10 minutes some people can yeah but you can't and so expecting you to is ridiculous yeah i mean back when i had an easier job right i could just role play all day while i was working you know because that job was stupid easy but yeah. <laughs> uh that's not my current job so i can't you know i've just yeah. got i've just got too many people um at work vying for my attention constantly so i can't ever like you know, give them half and uh, and give the role play half like I could at an easier job because, you know, I've got multiple people at work looking for my attention at the same time. Exactly. And and that's where your priority is, which is totally great. Um, And for some and like for some people like Naomi, I know Naomi has the kids. So obviously, if she disappears in the middle of a conversation, it's not because she's blowing me off because Crystal probably needed something. Yep. Um, so she'll <laughs> randomly disappear because, uh, you know, she has a child and a toddler. And <laughs> and, yeah, and that's just something to expect. That's just part of it. For me, I'm I'm busy, which means that sometimes it goes a week <laughs> without a reply. And then sometimes it's like I could do 10 replies tonight and then it's going to be a week. Because yep. that's just how my life is. Yep. Sometimes and it happens that way. It's understanding that your partner partner is a real human being mm -hmm. and that emotional investment is going to look different for everybody mm -hmm. but that you still should expect something back you should um and i want to take a second to go back to the the jealousy thing we talked about it a little in some other contexts, but i want to talk about it in this context too um because different people require different expectations and and different levels and things like that i think it can be easy when we're talking about emotional investment to compare like compare the emotional investment um, that someone's giving to another plot that they're doing versus yours. So I'll give an example. Um, on Tumblr indie role plays, everything was posted to your dash. You could see it all, right? So you it was in your face if somebody was role playing with somebody else, right? And so if they're like role playing with somebody else and they're not responding to your thread, that can feel a certain sort of way on Tumblr where you have a refreshing dash where it's like, you, every time you refresh, there's another reply and another reply and another reply. And um, I think sometimes we have to take a step back and realize that favorites is a real thing that happens and it's not necessarily a bad thing and that different people require different levels and somebody giving a lot of attention or more attention to this other person doesn't necessarily reflect anything negative on you and what they have with you. It might just be that they've known that person longer. It might be that um, that, that particular person needs attention right then for one reason or another and has asked for it. Um, it might be that they just have a greater comfort level with that person. Like maybe that person is okay with like shorter posts so they can go back and forth really fast and you're not, right? You want those longer posts so it's gonna take longer for them to write with you. Um, you know, all of those things have to go into it. And I, and I think that when it comes to emotional investment, it's really important to try to not do the comparing game because that just makes the jealousy monster come out. And, um, and y'all know I have like no tolerance. I already said that I have no tolerance for the jealousy monster. So <laughs> I think that's important when yeah. it comes to emotional investment. Think about the emotional investment that you're getting from that person and try to not compare it to what you see them doing for others. Yeah. And you, I mean, you never know. Like for me, sometimes there's a character that I'm, there are times where I'll get off after a hard day and I'll just be like, Estelle is awake. 
<laughs> and ready to just be a bitch. Yep. And then I'll just be like, who wants to write with Estelle? It's not because I don't want to do my other plots. It's not because of anything like that. It's who wants to write with this character because that uh, this character is easier to write right now. Yep, this like, is who I'm interested another, in at this moment. That's another way. Exactly. Um, sometimes if you have limited spoons, you get to choose the, the threads that make you happy that don't feel like work. Mm -hmm. um, and that's okay too. And it is it is hard to swallow that to realize that like, oh, it sucks that I'm not everybody's favorite person to write with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep. I mean, I, I don't know what that feels like because everyone, I'm everyone's favorite person to write with, but, um, <laughs> no, but. <laughs> Why are you lying? Why are you lying? <laughs> I'm not lying. Are you telling me I'm not your favorite person to write with, Karen? Is that, is that what I'm hearing right now? You know what, Landon? This is like not a comfortable conversation. I'm like not interested in this anymore. I take it back what I said. <laughs> I am, in fact, everybody's favorite person to write with. Um, no, just kidding. Um, it's just you you sit there and you, you do have to swallow it down and it sucks. And sometimes it sucks that if you are shipping with a person, especially, and see them possibly be what appears to be more interested in another ship. Yep. Or more interested in another dynamic with that same character. In those moments, it feels really gross. It mm -hmm. doesn't feel good. But that isn't necessarily what's happening. And I mm -hmm. think that what you said is good is that you don't have all the you don't have all the information. Yeah, you don't necessarily and, know. And if you do feel like that, and I'm not saying this should be an everyday thing, I'm not saying that this is but sometimes it is nice to sit there and be like, hey. I would like to set a time to get this certain dynamic or this certain plot or something down fast. What time works for you that we could just go back and forth? Yeah. Or is there a way that we can focus on this and get this done really quickly? Cause I want to move on mm -hmm. because I'm getting bored because of X, Y, and Z. Um, you, you sit there and you, you communicate that mm -hmm. once again, it's about communication. Yep. I've had a lot of success with the method that you're talking about. Um, another method that I've, that I've tried that I've not had a lot of success with, so I just want to say this, um, is asking why. Uh, so going to the person and being like, why aren't you responding to me? Or why are you re oh, doing sorry. rapid fire with this, this, this thread right here? Or, or I feel like you don't like our ship anymore. Why? Like, do not ask why. There's nothing that they're going to tell you that's going to make you feel better. Okay. And they probably don't even know why, you know, and even if they do, do you really want to hear that? And I, and I know I say that in a lot of other contexts too in role play, you know, but I just don't think that asking why benefits anybody. I think instead you should just say, this is what I'm looking for. How can we make this happen? Which is basically the method that Landon talked about. So asking why automatically puts someone on the defense. Yeah. Because it's not even, it's not, you might not be doing this or consciously aware that you're doing this, but what you're doing when you're asking why is I need you to defend your actions. Yeah. And nobody wants to do that. <laughs> yeah. So all of a sudden it's like, oh, I need you to defend why you like writing with this person more than you like writing with me. And then all of a sudden I feel like, oh God, I have to explain that. I don't want to explain that. I don't, that's not how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then all of a sudden it's, it's like, oh God, I, I have to defend this. I don't want to defend this. I, I just like doing it. Isn't that reason enough? Yeah. And how can you even what? say that to somebody? Like, I'm sorry that I like them better than you. Like, who says that? That's awful. <laughs> even if it's true, you don't say that to people. Yeah, no, absolutely <laughs> don't. And so then all of a sudden you're like, oh, and then it just, it, what it does is it doesn't do you any good because all that happens is sit there and go, oh God, this person is really, A, jealous. Mm -hmm. Um. Which, none of us fuck with so all of a sudden it's like okay well you're really jealous and i kind of want to get out of this now yeah um and also it, it just makes you like feel ucky and no one wants to feel ucky by their partner yeah yeah nobody wants to feel like that um so yeah that's when you're having these conversations resist the urge to ask why even if you think you want to know I can tell you from experience, there is nothing that that person is going to say to you that's going to feel good. Every possible response is going to feel like garbage. And they're going to feel like garbage telling it to you. Yeah. Yep. Shadow just out here telling the real truth. What, what did she say? <laughs> oh, um, have said I like, that, like them better than you on Tumblr. <laughs> oh my god. 
God. Okay, but some people on Tumblr are freaking crazy. <laughs> and so you got to just tell them it's because I like them better than you, my friend, and you're kind of possessive and it's annoying. <laughs> Not wrong. <laughs> I think that that is the... It's part of it, right? Mm -hmm. It's just sitting there and being like, nope, just... Ask for what you need instead of accusing for what you're not getting. Yes, exactly. You and need and, advocate for your own needs, and that's the and way you're going to have the su successful communication. Y'all should just charge me because that's amazing self help right there. <laughs> um, oh, Summer wants to see the baby. the baby. Okay, okay, I'll set that up. Um, Landon, go ahead and, and talk for a second while I set that up. Um, Ree's in here, so y'all can see y'all can see Ree. No, I am. Um, I I just wanted to hit back to because there was a point in compromise and communication that I think I missed, um, and that was no one likes playing with the kid who says, "I'm going. We're going to do this, or I'm not playing." That does not work. That strategy has never worked. It didn't work in the third grade. It didn't work in the first grade. It doesn't work as adults. <laughs> <laughs> that sitting there and and that's part of the compromise is sitting there and going oh, I can't just dig my heels into this. I need to, because what is going to happen if I dig my heels into this is that no one's going to play with me. So, oh, the baby. Yep. Oh, she put her head like under my footstool. Hang on. I don't even know if y'all can hear me right now. We can. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, okay, there we go. Now, now she's actually on camera. Yeah, she's like under, <laughs> under the thing, so... <laughs> There we go. She's like, I'm beautiful, but I don't want to be seen. <laughs> I mean, that's her mode 24-7. That's just how he is. <clears throat> yeah, so I totally I totally agree. Like, I, I think you got to advocate for your own boundaries, but I, I, I think if you say no all the time that you have, like, okay, like, on, like we talk about playground metaphors, if you always want to play Sailor Moon and you never let anybody else play DBZ, even though you you all both like Sailor Moon and DBZ, guess what? People are going to want to stop playing with you, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I think shipping's the same way. Like, you have to have, you have to, like, let the other person lead sometimes. Yep. <laughs> and it's, um, it's, sometimes hard to do that sometimes it's it's um i know that we're all built with i really want this to be important to me i really want this to be important to the other person i really want this to work out i had this idea especially if you're a plotter uh sometimes learning to let go is the hardest lesson you have to learn mm -hmm. but it is this like it's this lesson that you do have to learn that you have to let other people take the reins you cannot be in control all of the time Nope. And you can't say no to everything just because it doesn't fit the image that you have in your head of how you want the ship to go. Because it will make someone feel like a vending machine rather than a person you're shipping with. Mm -hmm. And I think the opposite also happens. We haven't talked much about, about this, but I think this is also a problem in, in role play circles a lot of times too, is where when somebody that's not much of a plotter finds somebody that really is a plotter and is willing to put forth ideas and they just say yes all the time with not adding well, anything else, then you end up with a very similar problem because you have to remember role play is improv. So you got a yes and, right? You got a yes yeah. and, and I think sometimes role players are real good at that yes and really don't put any energy into that and. And that's another way that you end up having your shipping partner feel like a vending machine because you're not offering anything. They're just like, well, no, it's okay. We'll just do whatever you want to do, honey. And it's like, okay, but that's only fun for so long. They're going to get bored. And that that is something that's not only shipping partners. That is all any someone I role, I role play with. Uh, mm -hmm. I have started, I have started, uh, with new people that I've started writing with, I have started, um, saying like, Hey, I don't deal well with just people just saying, yes, you need to then like give ideas. Mm. Oh, so like <laughs> have, telling I've them? Pref I have prefaced conversations with that. Cause I will, I do get to a point where it's just like, if someone's just like, yes, or just says no, and then doesn't offer anything. Like, like why? Extra, Mm. Yeah, just sits there and goes, no, I don't really like that. Okay. So like, what do you like? <laughs> I'm. If you want me to come up with ideas, that's fine. I'll gladly come up with ideas. You can't just be Shark Tank, no. 
Yeah. Like, you can't just be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta sit there and be like, no, but how about this? Or no, I really like this aspect. Or no, I don't, I don't like that, but I like this, that, and the other thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lunar, don't feel bad about that. Um, sometimes you can just say yes. I'm talking more about people that do this kind of serially, um, and that can really kill a ship for me. Like if someone's always yeah. like, if I if like I propose an idea and they're like, yes, and they're excited, okay, that's wonderful. But then when I propose like the fifth idea and their response is still like just yes, and that's it, then I'm like, okay, but you're a person too. Like, please tell me what you want. <laughs> or the Or the worst idea of, yeah, sure. Just a yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, sure. That's not even a yes. It's a yeah, sure. And it's like, uh, I can waste my time with somebody else, too, if you <laughs> are not interested in this. Well, because then it's, it's ambiguous. Knock twice, if, knock twice if you still want to ship with me. Hi, Thumper. <laughs> hey, Thumper. Yeah, I think that goes back to the, the communication, right? Because when you say that, it makes things ambiguous for the other person. And then they're, like, starting to wonder, like, are they really emotionally invested? You know, are they truly yeah. interested? And you don't really know. And I think text is the medium that we're using for this. And it is a medium that is lacking in a lot of regards. And one of the regards is that it does not convey tone. It doesn't convey excitement. Um, you have to add in extra stuff to convey those things. And I know that that makes it harder, but that's why all of these things are so important and making sure that you're communicating clearly is so important. Um, Let me tell you that what has changed my life is all of these messaging apps such as discord and facebook and even like imessage has now included our integrated gift searches yes in there <laughs> because all you have to do i literally if you said yes then you found a yes gift thousand times yes thousand that makes it so much better yes. it's not even um, your face an effort to find the gift well because <laughs> the thing is also i think like psychologically it's not your face but now i see a face now I see a human face conveying some emotion. So I feel like yeah, I can yeah. like I can like understand and process that in a much more concrete way where I believe what I'm reading, you know, as opposed to like as opposed to like wondering. Cuz text it's so easy. It's so easy to just type whatever you want the other person to hear without it actually being real. And sometimes if there's no other clues, you can start to think that like that's what's going on. You know, and that's not fair. And I'm not saying any of this is fair. This is just what happens, you know. This is, it's human it's human thing. It's part of the it's part of communicating. Mm -hmm. Period, end of story. It's part of the communication process. Deal with it. Mm -hmm. It's just it kind of is what it is, right? It's just it's something you have to do. Isn't yeah, that why we use icons? Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that's that's a great point, Shadow, is that, that we use GIFs and icons on Tumblr for that same reason. But I think that they're more useful now in um, chat, in chat, or like not now, but, but it's at least useful in chat because it's at least something. It's something. Mm -hmm. Emojis do the same thing. Um, it's like at least more than yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Use those tools. Don't just use text. Like, don't, don't be a boomer and just write everything formally because then nobody's going to have any idea what your tone is and they're going to ascribe instead how they feel. And that's how anxiety comes into it because they're going to put their anxiety on it instead of thinking about how you might really feel. Yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and if that's all you can offer, <laughs> if, if, like, if all you can offer is a yes, it's, that's a, not a lot. But if you can offer yes and a gift, it certainly feels like a lot more. Yep. Yep, for sure. 45,678 right. images of Elliot Page. I mean, I wouldn't complain about that. I'm just saying. <laughs> so I think we have one last point. Yes. And then we should start wrapping up. I agree. I um, agree. Get the party started. <clears throat> get the party started. All right. So, go ahead with the last um, point. My last point, and it kind of ties into things that we've been talking about as far as communication goes and compromise goes. Your character character doesn't need to revolve around your ship mm -hmm. and more importantly your partner's character doesn't either mm -hmm. people and characters are multifaceted and some our peers want to write more plot lines than just shipping mm -hmm. which means that if you are ship focused and you you shouldn't get possessive of your partner's character mm -hmm. that is something that we see a lot of and it's again that jealousy monster that we've talked about 
but it's this idea of because you are in a ship with this partner you suddenly control that partner's actions or know that part or know that character more than any other character mm-hmm. um but you become you very don't. invested you become very invested because you're shipping with them and so i it's think understandable why it happens sometimes but i think it's a reminder that you, you don't get to control that character mm-hmm Mm-hmm. And I think like, I think like there's kind of, there's kind of like two points to this, right? Like when you're shipping with somebody, you do need to make sure that you're checking in with your shipping partner, right? But you have to understand that not everyone is here just for the ship. So, okay, so I'll say this. I- I've said this, I've said a few times, like, we don't want to kid ourselves role play really at the end of the day it kind of is about shipping okay like it really is like we we pretend we're writing these grand stories and we are but like it's really about shipping okay let's be real but (laughs) also equally important and equally real is it's not just about shipping okay when i say role play is really about shipping what i mean is that that's kind of what everyone's here for but that is not the one and only thing people are here for And so what that means is that if you are very ship focused and that's like really, truly like the thing. Oh, oh my gosh, Summer. Thank you so much for the gift subs. Um, Bree, you've got a sub now. Um, Anyway, so what that means is that that person is probably still going to do other plots outside of your ship and they might not check in with you on every little thing, right? They might be doing things that they think, well, this isn't really related to the ship, so they're just going to do it. Right. And it's okay for them to get invested in friendships, in family drama, in things like that, um, that don't have anything to do with the ship. Um, You know, and they don't always have to be replying to their ship lightning fast or faster than their other threads. Like, it's okay if Mm -hmm. they get invested in something outside the ship. Yep. Yeah. And it's, it's, I think it also goes to say that um, possessiveness is something that is easily seen in group dynamics. Yup. Um, we, like jealousy, can see possessiveness mm-hmm. um, as a writer. And it makes it really hard to want to not only write with the person who's being possessive, but the character that's being possessed. Because mm-hmm. it, you feel like you're being watched. You feel like there, there's a judgmental moment. Um, and you also feel like that things are going to either get blown out of proportion proportion or that your threads aren't going to matter as much or your plot lines aren't going to matter as much. Mm -hmm. And it's a really hard balance. It really is. Yeah. Erica, I love your, your comment. Um, RP is fun when there's emotion involved, whether it's good or bad depends on the dynamic, but I want to feel things. And I think that's what we're all here for at the end of the day. Right. And a lot of us get it from our ships, but there are other places to get it from too. So I think that we have to be careful about not treating ships as the Holy grail. And then once you find the ship, like to assume everyone's going to forsake everything for the ship, because some people are, but a lot of people aren't, they're still going to want all that other drama too. Yep. And there is nothing wrong with that. And um, again, it goes back to like communicating what your expectations are, communicating what it is you want out of it and communicating to make sure that your partner is feeling heard, but also checking in with yourself and making sure that you are getting as much out of your character as you want. Mm -hmm. Um, This is not only a call out to people who are being the possessive type, but also a call out to people who are allowing themselves to be possessed. Yep. Is that you you get to do what you want with your character. They are not, they don't have to revolve around the ship. Yep. If you want it to, awesome, cool, all power to you, but do not feel like you have to. Yeah, you don't. Um, And I have a, and I have a video on my channel about saying no. If, uh, if you're hearing this and you feel like, oh my God, they're talking to me. I don't know how to tell people no. And I get in these situations, Um, go take a look at that video. It has some tips for helping you out with, uh, with navigating that conversation. Because if you're not used to saying no, it's really hard. It's a muscle that you have to flex. You know what I mean? And if you feel like also you are the person that, um, might be the, like, oh, I'm a little, I'm a little insecure about the shipping or I'm a little possessive about partners when they get, when partners when they um when we've decided to ship together um breathe trust in the communication that you have trust that the ship dynamic is as important to your partner as it is to you but that they also want to explore other things and you are free to as well yeah for sure for sure 
All right, I think that's a good note to leave it on. So this was this was our shipping episode. I was I guess we kind of had two had two Valentine's episodes. We had our our uh, Ooh, ship yeah. dynamics episode with Among Us last week, and then we had our shipping tips episode. So two Valentine's Day episodes um, <laughs> for uh, for for everybody. Special for you guys. Yes. Um, all right. You Do you it's have an article? Day. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, do you have an article for us? I can go ahead and save the game if you are ready. Okay. There you go. Article. Okay. I'm gonna save and actually like fully close it and then open that up. So, give me just a second, guys. All right. Game is closed. <clears throat> oh, closing. There we go. Alrighty. <laughs> exactly, Thumper. <laughs> Special. Yes. All right. Here we go. Get paid $3,200 to create art on this remote Michigan island for three weeks. Oh my god, wait, I want to do this. What is this? I'm just saying. No, there's like this retreat um, located in Lake Superior called rabbit island and it may not be to tahiti but it is beautiful it's like 91 acres of pristine paradise is what they call it but it's michigan so you know i don't know how i feel about that cold pristine um, paradise <laughs> um i mean that might be true but it's gonna be cold right yeah i mean it's gonna be cold for you southern folk it's gonna be nice for for those of us who you know have a actual degree difference you know what um <laughs> you be quiet <laughs> You be quiet. You could you couldn't handle it. You couldn't handle our hundred degrees. So don't even. No. <laughs> That's why I live here. <laughs> oh, Thumper, it is meant for you. It's Rabbit Island. Ah. It's Rabbit Island. <laughs> oh, I love that. It's Thumper um, Island. Yeah. So it takes place between sometime between mid June and mid September. It's three people mm -hmm. win this residency. And they offer a three thousand two hundred dollars stipend um, to help purchase like research and expenses, travel expenses, and supplies, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but it's basically this beautiful escape to just go create art. Oh, look at this! Oh, they've got like an outdoor kitchen. Oh, this is really beautiful. Yeah. Okay, um, well, anybody that's interested, like Rabbit software. Island Foundation does this annually. Yeah, that's why and there's Wi-Fi and cell phones, so maybe RP can consider be considered art. <laughs> well, they say visual artists of all disciplines, as well as yeah. writers, poets, architects, designers, musicians, filmmakers, composers, and choreographers. I don't know. I think role play counts. I mean, they listed basically everything here, so why not? Yes, I agree. So it's um, March 14th is when you have to apply by, and it's twenty dollars uh, U United States, but everyone is is welcome to attend. And maybe if you feel strongly, you could you could be checked. Yeah, why not? Oh my yeah. gosh, this is awesome. I mean, I do think like how long how long are you? Three weeks, three thousand two hundred dollars in three weeks. I don't know. I do feel like that would be enough to live on three to live on for three weeks. Yeah, I can make that work. I think. Well, I think. Uh, yeah, I could, maybe could make that work. I could figure out how. Yeah, um, I mean, <laughs> let's do it. All an all ex all expense paid island retreat i mean this sounds wonderful what are you even going to spend the three thousand dollars on you know when you're there i guess food and travel and research and and supplies so if you want really fancy paints or whatever oh yeah that makes sense us, all of us are very lucky because we you know words are our art so yeah i mean all i all i need all i need is a computer right <laughs> i'm good and have wi-fi so wi-fi electricity you're good to go oh i could still make videos stream good. from from the island in michigan <laughs> so i'm just saying it exists how does food get there oh that's a good question thumper they must have it I'm stocked sure. or something how do you get there by boat like, yeah <laughs> People live on islands everywhere, so it like it is possible. That's true. You just have to boat to it. Okay, well, Naomi, it's fine. You don't have to apply. And go. <laughs> I'll go. For both of us. Well, I think it's for, since Naomi's in the UK, it would be quite a lot more expensive for her than for one of us U.S. residents. You know, U.S. Yeah. and Canada probably could get there pretty way way cheaper than um, other people. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tap. By the way, I see your comment. Um, we do this show every. Uh, every Saturday, noon to two. So if you like the writing and role play advice, we talk about all that kind of stuff on here. So come on back if, if this interested you. Yeah, man, this sounds like so, so much fun. 
what a good article. <laughs> yeah, I want to, I, I want to do it. The only thing I feel like is I don't have time. I don't have time to like, my job won't let me quit for just three weeks and then come back. You know what I mean? That's the only thing that would stop me from applying. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> well, <I think laughs> Fucking capitalism. <laughs> capitalism gross <laughs> all right well that is the end of state enter stage window okay so um i'm gonna switch to webcam only for a second all right guys so it's time to party party so this is what's gonna happen i am actually going to end the stream in just a few minutes and the reason why i'm doing this is because i do want the vod of enter stage window to go up obviously i'm not gonna be able to work on the vod until um tomorrow so it's gonna go up later but i want it to be like its own contained thing to make that easier for me to edit so i'm actually going to click end stream but I'm going to turn the stream right back on. So don't go anywhere. So we're going to basically, it's going to be off for maybe like five minutes total while I change some settings. Now, when we turn the stream back on, I am going to need to take a break because I got to go to the bathroom, y'all. It's just, I, I got to pee. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, and and so we are going to take a, take a little bit of a break. So I'm going to take about five minutes with the stream off now, change some settings, stuff like that. I'm going to turn the stream right back on, and then I'm going to take a for real break where I get up. So... If you guys, um, if you guys need uh, a bathroom break, if you need some water, if you need to get your party snacks, this is the time to go do it. Um, yeah, it's a Maine Coon rival. Naomi actually drew, uh, colored this for me. Uh, she's uh, she's an amazing colorist. And uh, yeah, so okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do this now. We're gonna turn the stream off, and I'll be back in about five minutes. You guys don't go anywhere. Hold on, I gotta say my don't forget to be awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead and say it. <laughs> Don't forget to be awesome. Have a great day. I will be back on the stream at like six o'clock to play Jackbox with y'all. Yes. Go have fun with Sam for a little bit and we'll see you later. Will do. All right. Bye All right. guys. Bye guys. See you in just a second.